Hi there, and welcome into the eight ways you're losing money with a new patient phone call, and welcome into our podcast studio. If you've never listened to the New Patient Group and Right Chat podcast, please check us out on all major podcast channels. Just type in New Patient Group podcast, you'll find it. And also our on-demand studio. We shoot a lot of on-demand courses right behind me with those studio lights on. A lot of really innovative ways to grow your business, grow your practice in three key areas, leadership, team training, and online marketing. Uh, welcome in. Uh, again, my name is Brian Wright. I'm the founder and CEO of New Patient Group and managing partner of Right Chat. And welcome into this eight ways you're losing money on the new patient phone call. The first one, let me discuss why Right Chat was created. And the very first one is Miss New Patient Calls. Now, this happens, I think it's obvious uh, on this piece I'm about to talk about is obviously before you're open at lunch and after you close. The three most frequent, most convenient times, if you will, for people to call, uh, especially with this modern consumer that's busy, that's on the go, at least that's what we, we convince ourselves of that, right? Uh, the three most convenient times, oftentimes are when practices aren't open, and that's early in the morning on the way to work, that's at lunch when they're off work, and that's a little bit later in the evening when they're driving home. A lot of times, practices aren't open then, and a solution for a long time was, well, let's get a call center. Well, the call center will take the message and we'll call them back the next day or we'll call them back when we can. And we talk so much about how outdated that is because the modern consumer that's shopping around, the days of them leaving a message and you calling them back, they're over, they're gone. Uh, we talk a lot if it's a loyal referral from a patient of yours that's been a patient a long time, uh, then yes, there are other, those are obvious uh, exceptions to the rule. But the overall rule is when people are shopping and you don't answer it, they're just calling right down the list. They're calling to the next one. It's a lost opportunity that you never even know about. Um, and then the other piece to that is, is let's say that for whatever reason you do get a hold of that person again, the fact that they called and you didn't answer, it's a poor representation of your brand. It's just a bad brand awareness. It's a bad experience. And the phone so often, we've all called businesses that didn't answer, it's annoying. Even if you really wanted to buy from them, you had to leave a message, whatever the situation was, it's annoying. So it doesn't represent your brand well at all. So you lose really in both situations. Inevitably, though, there's a whole nother world on the missed calls that happen. Part of that is, is, is you are, and this is, I think, the not obvious, is you are missing more new patient calls during business hours than you are missing during off business hours that I just discussed. All kinds. Let's say in this example, you have two receptionists that sit up front. Nancy, make-believe name, is checking somebody out. Uh, Susie, make-believe name, is on the phone uh, with a patient. And the next thing you know, the phone rings. Inevitably, a couple scenarios happen. What most of the time happens, those scenarios with most practices from what we study, is the reality of the situation is, is that call that's coming in goes unanswered because one person is checking somebody out, the other person's already on the phone. Uh, another scenario, so boom, there's a missed new patient call right there. And uh, this is not the right chat model. We don't handle existing patient calls, but the reality of the situation, even, even if it's an existing patient call that goes unanswered, obviously that's not going to, it's not going to put you out of business, but the reality is that's still bad for your brand because they have bought from you. So if anything, that experience needs to be better. And inevitably with right chat, one of the cool things is, is you have a backup plan. You have an insurance policy. So if Nancy's on the phone, Betty's checking somebody out, the phone does ring, and it happens to be a new patient. Well, guess what? You have a backup plan. We're going to answer that call as if we're sitting at your front desk. We're going to remotely access your software, and we are going to schedule that patient. We think, act, talk as if we were your employee, right? You have an agent assigned to you, knows your software, knows your scheduling protocols. So the beauty is, is that caller doesn't even know a quote unquote third party has answered because we're an extension of your team. The other great thing is that a lot of it goes overlooked is it builds a better brand. It's just a better overall patient experience because the phone calls are answered. But also the other one that's very forgotten is your team now can take care of the person standing in front of you. You know, hopefully as it relates today, if you have a patient standing in front of you, and the phone rings, you have to get that phone. And if it's a new patient, you have to stay on that call. What happens to you in so many practices is this, phone rings, Betty answers, hello, please hold, puts you right on hold. Happens all the time. We do thousands of mystery calls, and that happens time and time again. Matter of fact, it even takes us three mystery calls on average to actually get somebody to answer. If that's not a scary statistic, if I had a, if I, and I used to have a bunch of practices, don't have them now because I run these companies, but the reality is if that doesn't scare you, nothing will. On three average mystery calls, it takes us to get a hold of somebody. 
And a lot of times we get that, uh, hello, please hold, because your receptionists are inundated with so many things. And it's a horrible representation of your brand when you say, hello, please hold, and it's a new patient. Even again, if it's an existing patient that's already bought from you, same story. So you have all these scenarios that go into these missed call situations that cost practices six figures a year and it domino effects because not only do you lose that new patient and all the starts that come with it, if you're an orthodontic practice out there, that's five, six, seven plus thousand dollars a pop. GP practices listening. The reality is for you, your, your patient is worth more than an orthodontic practice, just usually more over the course of time. But then you're losing whatever, the husband that would come in if you're a GP practice from their wife coming in. You, you lose, if you're an ortho practice, you lose the, you know, maybe the sister is eight years old today and you start a 14-year-old. Then the sister grows up in a few years. They need orthodontic treatment. You lose that. You lose all of these lost opportunities compound on themselves when you lose and miss a new patient phone call. So the reality is, is you have to be the business owner that wakes up and realizes this is happening to you. We see it and there's a reason why we have a 99% client retention right now with Right Chat is that it is a no brainer for practices to invest in these lost opportunities and have an insurance policy for the calls that otherwise would be missed or have an insurance policy to know now I can take care of the person standing in front of me offering an exceptional experience because if that phone rings, I have a backup plan in right chat that will get it, speak as if they work in my practice, and then schedule the call for us. And we see it with practices, even small, you know, we have small practices all the way up to very large practices. And obviously the large one, the call volumes more, they miss even more. But those smaller practices, maybe you're a single practice with a one receptionist. Well, you're missing calls. There's no doubt about it, you're missing calls. Don't be the CEO and the business owner that says, ah, this isn't happening to me because those are always the ones where it's happening to you the most. But you have a choice. You can say, well, if I'm missing calls, can I go out and hire another employee? Sure, you can. But it's going to cost a lot more than if you just used us. And we tell everybody, once, once you're spending more with us than it would be to hire an employee, then you have a choice. Go out and hire an employee and then reduce back your cost to us or just keep dealing with us because you don't have to have the headaches of so many employees. We also replace the need for all of those employees. So it's a really great solution in so many different ways around those new mis patient missed phone calls that absolutely grow practices, small and large, six figures a year. It's relatively eye-opening, not relatively, very eye-opening to our doctors, to our clients on how many calls we're actually scheduling for them. And it kind of makes them sick to their stomach thinking back. We had a guy the other day, I'll never forget it, He's just, you know, he's been around, he's been doing this for 30 years, he signed a board, and he started looking at this, we're sending him five one month, and 10 another, and then two, and then maybe we go a month where it's, you know, maybe we get lucky, or he gets lucky, and there's none, and then it's 12, and next thing you know, it's 50, 100 new patients, easily in a year, and he's just looking at himself going, geez, this is what I've been missing every year, my entire career, so it's happening, you need a solution, and a call center is not enough. It's got to be a call center on steroids, if you, if you will. It's got to think, act, and speak as if they're sitting at your front desk, remotely access your software, and schedule that new patient.